Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel and as it's the beginning of January 2019, a very happy and healthy new year to you too. Yes, it's the beginning of 2019, which means that for many people, um, at this time of the year, they're looking forwards, they're making plans, they're setting out projects, they're setting out timelines, they're looking forward, they're looking ahead to doing things. And I'm no exception to that case either. I've, very, you know, I've got some very clear plans about things that I wanna do in 2019. But I think sometimes at this time of the year, we spend a lot of time looking forwards and not necessarily enough time looking backwards at the things that we've done in the previous year, reflecting on them, reflecting upon them, um, learning from them, seeing what it is that we can take from those experiences and what perhaps we should leave behind. And that's what I wanna do in this video. I wanna talk about my 2018 last year's bushcraft reflections. There are three things that I want to reflect upon. Now, I've done a lot over the past 365 days, so coming up with just three things was quite tricky. What I did to help me though, was I looked back through my notebook that I carry about with me when I go and the notes that I make in there. I also looked back to this time last year on YouTube and quickly scrolled through all of the videos that I've uploaded in the past year. And that, that acted as a very, very, very helpful memory jogger of the things that I've done, the things I've been learning, experimenting with, trialing over the past 365 days. So to be perfectly honest, whilst the notebook was useful, actually because YouTube is my online journal, if you like, that became the go-to place for me to take and trim down 365 days of doing stuff to just three highlights of the year that I want to reflect upon. So in no particular order then, the first highlight of the year was nailing or, or getting better at, let's not say nailing, but getting better at my sharpening skills for my, uh, for my cutting tools. In the past, I'd, I'd, I felt I'd been doing a good job. I'd attended um, courses in which knife sharpening was a was part of the syllabus. I'd watched God only knows how many YouTube videos. I'd watched God only knows and um, read God only knows how many articles on the subject and it just never quite seemed to fall into place. I got them sharp but I wasn't really happy with them and then um, I bought a new piece of equipment. I bought um, a sharpening kit from Beaver Bushcraft and I followed one of their YouTube videos that's associated with a sharpening kit and as you'll see in this video up here, if you watch the full video, I get quite excited near the end at how I've been able to turn a very, very blunt kitchen knife into a very, very sharp kitchen knife. And I've been able to replicate that with all of my knives and cutting tools since. So big, big highlight of the year, as silly as it may sound, was the penny dropping, was the jigsaw puzzle piece falling into place around how to effectively sharpen my tools and of course once you've got sharp tools you can do very cool things with sharp tools which brings me on to my second bushcraft highlight of the year and that was my uh, my progress at carving specifically spoons at the moment but the progress and the improvements that i've been able to make with my carving skills have come on leaps and bounds now clearly a part of that, unsurprisingly, is linked with having much sharper tools than I did in the past. Lots of people in the past have, have kind of inspired me and motivated me to, to start carving, you know, Paul Kirtley, Paul Nichols, spoons on the, um, the basic bushcraft course that I did with them over a year ago, now getting on for two years ago. They were the kind of catalyst for, 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 for starting this out. And then as my skills have, have been honed and developed and my, my um, my experience has grown over that time. I've come across Tom, um, Spoon Carving with Tom on Instagram. Go and check out his Instagram videos, go and check out his YouTube tutorials. He's really helped and motivated me to go from where I where I left off to, to, to notching it up a level. As you can see on the screen at the moment, these are some of my more recent spoons that I've carved. They are far from 
perfect. They are far from the, the model type spoons that you'll see floating around on Instagram. But from where I started from to where I am now, I personally am very, very happy with them. So that's another been a real highlight of my year has been able to move the needle, I think, quite considerably with my spoon carving skills as well. And finally then, my bushcraft highlight slash reflection number three. I've actually squeezed two into here. Let's see if you let me get away with it. But it's been the courses that I've attended this year. A lot of the stuff that I do around developing myself relating to bushcraft is done informally. It's reading a book, it's watching a video, it's, it's experimenting with something out there on the ground. Every now and then though, I like to kind of have a formal experience, do a course, undertake a programme. And I've been doing that for the past few years and last year was no exception. Last year I went on the Woodcrafter course, again with Paul Kirtley and his team from Frontier Bushcraft, had a cracking week. That really helped me um, move from the, uh, the, the basic course that I did with Paul two years ago and his team and all of the experience that I've been gaining myself as I've been going out, that helped to, to move it up and notch up another level in terms of tree felling, fire management and outdoor cooking. Um, I'd been able to do to a degree all three of those going on that course so rapidly moved me along the skill set of each of them quite dramatically in only six days and I'm still going through and will probably always continue to go through the tree and plant ID masterclass, the online masterclass that Frontier Bushcraft um, also provide. Things are falling into the into place again this year and, and I think that's I think that's the key thing to think about when you're you're talking about tree and plant identification. Just doing a course over 12 months will get you so far. Doing the course, the same course again the following 12 months, a little bit more will drop into place and a little bit more will drop into place. I'm just moving into finishing my second year, moving into my third year and every single time I look at the subject and pick it up again, a little bit more has fallen into place. So again, another real highlight of me, if I look back almost three years, I was utterly bamboozled and could only identify a Christmas tree and a family tree. I can identify a lot more species now. I'm able to tell you what you could use them for. I'm able to tell you what you should avoid. And I'm able to do a lot of that identification. Well, let's not say a lot. I'm able to do some of that identification using the scientific names of the plants and trees and not just the common names. So there we have it. Those are my three highlights of the year, the year that was last year, 2018. An improvement in my knife sharpening, an improvement in my spoon carving, and the, my attendance on the Woodcrafter and ongoing attendance on the Tree and Plant ID Masterclass. Those were my three highlights of the year. But what about yours? What was your key takeaway, your light bulb moment, your, your moment of epiphany last year, 2018? What was it? Was it something big? Was it something small? Was it something that you didn't realise at the time, but it's only with the benefit of reflecting and looking back that you actually realise it is kind of a big deal? Please do let me know in the comments below, either on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, or wherever you're watching this, there'll be a comment box below do let me know in there what your bushcraft highlight of the year was for last year, 2018. Thank you, as always, for watching the video. Bit of an unusual one, there's no real bushcraft involved as such, but I did think it was a good opportunity to get on camera, share my highlights with you, and get you thinking not just about what's ahead of you in 2019, but what have you left behind that you could get some value from that took place in 2018. Thank you for watching. If you're not yet a subscriber, you know what to do with that button down there. Thank you if you've already clicked on it in the past. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And there's also a share button below. You know what I'm gonna ask you to do with that by now, don't you? Click it and use it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back very, very soon as we kind of get into 2019 in full throttle. Um, and we'll get these videos uh, continuing, hopefully, fingers crossed, to go out on a weekly basis and I've managed for almost the last two years. That might give you a clue as to what my next video is going to be about. Thanks for watching. Cheers.